First of all, though, uh, we're going to bring you our perspective guest today. And my guest on the programme today, some call a hero, others call a traitor. Alon Lee Green is the co-director of Standing Together. Now, it's an Israeli charity that tries to take humanitarian supplies collected in Israel into Gaza. For many, it's a way to recognise the suffering of the Palestinian people amid uh, what they call an unbearable political situation in Israel. For others, well, it's indirectly supplying goods and aid, of course, to Hamas. Well, France 24 actually filmed with that charity three months ago. And just before we speak to him, let's show you a brief part of that report from Andrew Hillier. Israelis say they're taking matters into their own hands. For the second time in a week, they're trying to deliver aid to Kerem Shalom, a crossing at the southern end of the Gaza Strip. The truck carries food supplies donated by hundreds of families inside Israel, both Jewish families as well as Palestinian families. Rice, fly, flour, canned food, sugar, basic needs that can elevate the dire problem of hunger, a mass hunger that's facing the civilian population in the Gaza Strip. So we're standing just outside the city of Ashkelon. The Standing Together aid convoy has now arrived on the first leg of its uh, journey to Kerem Shalom. But the police are here too, and they say they're going to escort it part of the way. A lorry carrying humanitarian aid sets off for Kerem Shalom, followed by dozens of activists in their cars. But at a police checkpoint, just a few kilometers from the crossing, the aid mission comes to an abrupt end. The activists are told to make a U-turn. We were stopped by police that put up a temporary block, uh, claiming it is a military quarantine zone. And they basically turned us back, um, go, go back to where we came from. We had received a lot of angry yellings from, from bystanders claiming that uh, we're the reason that this is happening, uh, that we're traitors to the country. That report filmed uh, around about three months ago, in fact, by France 24. Well, let's uh, talk then to Alan Lee Green. He joins us uh, now from Tel Aviv. Thanks very much for being with us on the programme. Um, first of all, just explain to us why you feel it's so important to get this aid into Gaza. Well, we cannot um, stand aside. We cannot witness um, people that are starving, people that are facing um, famine and just say that we have nothing to do with it, um, as if we're not responsible, um, and as if people from our society, dark forces, extreme right-wing forces, are trying to actively block the aid from getting into Gaza, while we are not allowed to bring our food convoys um, to the humanitarian aid organizations um, on the border of Gaza. So what we're doing is not only what you've shown right now in the, um, in the report, trying to bring food to Gaza, but actually, for the last few weeks, every day, we are confronting the settlers, the extreme right-wing settlers that are trying to block and attack the aid trucks. We're confronting them and protecting the aid trucks um, and allowing them to move freely into Gaza. How many have you been able to get through? Because as we saw in that report, it's very difficult, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, so um, um, just before we started, a month ago, um, every day, the extreme settlers were able, as you see here in the videos, able to block the aid trucks. They started looting them, setting them on fire, spilling the food, um, attacking the Palestinian uh, truck drivers, sending them to the hospitals, and even sending Israeli soldiers to the hospital. Since we started to intervene, every day for a full month now, all the aid trucks, dozens a day, are able to uh, go freely to Gaza without being um, um, harmed. And this is because we are interfering and standing between the attackers and the trucks themselves. And we are forcing the police to take action. How much support do you think you have? I mean, are you a minority in the country? So it depends what is the question you ask the public. If you ask the public whether people have the right to eat, most of the public will say yes. Whether you ask the public, do you believe the food arrives to um, normal people in Gaza? Most of the Israeli public think that Hamas um, uh, take control of it. We are not responsible for what the army, the Israeli army, is doing um, inside uh, Gaza and the lack of ability or the failure of our army to make sure that the aid organizations that are very active there in Gaza are able to receive the food and distribute it um, to the people in, in Gaza. This is the desired reality. But unfortunately, Israel is playing a double game here. In one hand, we are conquering Gaza, taking full responsibility on all the access and roads and towns and cities. On the second hand, we say, 
we are not responsible for the people in Gaza. We are not responsible on what happens with the, the food and, and the aid. But this is not acceptable. What we demand is that people that are under our control will be able to eat. And we say another thing. This is not merely a Palestinian um, uh, interest. If Palestinians do not have food, the Israeli hostages also will not have food. It's a basic fact. It's a basic truth. And another thing that we say is that it's not only a battle for food for starving people in Gaza. It is a battle for what kind of a society we are going to be. Are we going to be a society that is celebrating death, that is calling to um, uh, starve people, that is calling to kill innocent people? Or are we going to be a society that is standing in the side of life, in the side of solidarity, in the side of humanity? And I think that our choice is clear and most of the public is with us. Do you understand the, the, the difficulty, though, for a lot of people? Because if you can't guarantee uh, where this aid is going, there are a lot of people who will say you're just feeding the people who attacked Israel back in October. Well, if there is no food in Gaza, no one will eat, right? You mean including the hostages? Including millions of people that live in Gaza and the Israeli hostages. Is this an acceptable reality? What do you think needs to change at this stage? I mean, the government in Israel is obviously continuing down the route it is at the moment. We had that, of course, resignation of Benny Gantz earlier on in the week, which in a way means that the cabinet, this emergency war cabinet, is even more right wing than it was before. Well, this is the most extreme government um, ever controlled Israel. It's a government that believes in Jewish supremacy. Um, it's a racist government. It's a government that believes that the worth of a life of a Jewish person is higher than the worth of a Palestinian life. And we need this government to go. But even without this government, even without the extremist people that control Israel, we need to turn to a different direction to end this war and the occupation of decades of Palestinians, occupation that consists of oppression of millions of people, um, that is not only bad for the Palestinian, but is also bad for us, the Jewish citizens in Israel. A reality that creates violence does not end with only the Palestinian. This violence is turned against the Palestinians, and then it's turned against the Jews, and then it's turned against the Palestinians, and back to the Jews. And this is a cycle where people pay with their lives. And of course, we understand that Palestinians right now are paying the ultimate price. We do not deny it. But also what happened on October 7th, the massacre that Hamas committed, also the fact that there are Israeli citizens that are waiting, um, barely surviving in Gaza to be returned to Israel, all this indicates that we both pay a terrible price that needs to end right now. And the only way to end it is not to continue the war, not to continue the aggressions, but actually to accept the deal Biden presented um, uh, two weeks ago, a deal that is on the table um, to end the war with a ceasefire and to do a prisoner um, and hostages exchange right now. Bearing in mind what's happened over the last year, I mean, do you think, certainly in the short term, but potentially even in the longer term, do you think the rift uh, can ever be healed between the Palestinians and the Israelis now? This is the most terrible year in the history um, of this um, war, conflict, um, violent uh, clash between uh, Jews and Palestinians in this land. Um, but there is one basic fact that cannot be changed. Seven million Palestinians live on this land and they are going nowhere, despite of the fantasies of the extreme right wing in Israel. But next to them, seven million Jewish people live on the same land and they are going nowhere, despite of fantasies of other people. And if this is the reality that we must accept, we need to find a solution on how to share and live on this land together. If we will continue to say the other cannot survive here, it's either us or them, violence will continue. People will continue to die. There will be rivers of blood. But if we will accept our way of saying we need to end this reality and achieve a different reality where all people, Palestinians and Jews, are free, equal and independent, then we have a path forward and we can end this reality and achieve Israeli-Palestinian peace. This is what we're working for. But it, must, it needs to be um, um, you know, a first step of us acknowledging the Jewish society, the Israeli state, acknowledging our hegemony and our role of controlling and oppressing Palestinians for decades. It will not change without it. And Palestinians and the world need to also accept that Jewish safety is something we need to make sure exists. Alan Longreen, thank you very much for being with us on the programme today. Alan Longreen uh, joining us there from uh, Tel Aviv. Thank you very much.